Okay, so we're going to learn in this section, we're going to learn about how fast you need to go to go up and never come back down. I mean, the old saying is, whatever goes up must come down. Wrong! Okay, if you go fast enough, you'll go up and you'll never come down. Now on Earth, that's about 25,000 miles per hour you got to go to go up and never come down. And don't do that in the atmosphere or you're going to explode. Okay, but if you get above the atmosphere, you can go that fast. And there are, um, oh, a couple dozen people that have done that. Yes, we did. Um, but um, it's called escape velocity. And uh, we're going to learn about escape velocity here today. Uh, but first, I want to review um, orbital velocity. Um, let's talk about how fast we need to go to be in orbit. Well, if, if imagine the Earth's surface right here, and we watch a, rock, a rocket launch. OK. So here's a curvature of the Earth. Not very well drawn, but oh well. And we've got this pesky atmosphere. Oh, it makes it very inconvenient to get into orbit. Actually, this this looks more like the top of Benny's head, doesn't it? All right. Now, <laughs> sorry, Benny. All right, now. <laughs> All right, so now, if you launch a spacecraft, you have to go really fast. But if you go fast enough to be in orbit, you can't go that fast in the atmosphere because what happens is that the atmosphere, as, you, as your, your spacecraft or your, your aircraft moves through the atmosphere, it compresses the air in front of it. And if you remember from uh, you know, all those ideal gas laws, if you compress a gas, it gets hot. Really, it's not friction with the air that makes a spacecraft or a meteor hot. What makes it hot is all its kinetic energy is being used to compress the air in front of it and that compressed air gets super hot and that heat radiates into the spacecraft and can or the meteor or whatever and can vaporize it. So if you want to be in orbit the first thing you have to do is you have to go up. So you'll see a spacecraft and it will go up but then very quickly it will start pitching over because it, 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 it can't just go up. It, if it goes up and then it cuts the engine unless it's going over 25,000 miles per hour the Earth's gravity will slow it down and it will come back down and crash into the Earth or land. Actually they're planning on doing this uh, very soon for 200,000 bucks you can buy a flight into space but you won't be able to go into orbit all you'll be able to do is go up and come back down. But you will get above the atmosphere, and when they cut the engine, you'll get about five minutes or so of um, a free fall. So you'll be able to float around in there and throw up in space and watch the little particles floating all around you. All right, that'll be, a, I'd, I'd pay $200,000 to do that. All right, now, well, not with furlough days though, sorry. Now, um, now, let's shrink down the Earth, though, and let's imagine that we've gotten... Oh, see, that wasn't a very good circle. All right, so I have to draw it over and over again. To, now, imagine uh, we, we've got somebody on the Earth that has a great big cannon. So you're going to stand here. Yeah, this, this person's pretty big. It's my, it's my brother. <laughs> He's taller. And then we've got a cannon right here. So here's our cannon. Very big cannon. And we shoot. We, we, we put a cannonball in there. We put a bunch of powder. And boom. It crashes. The cannon, the gra Earth's gravity will make the cannonball curve down and crash into the ground. So what do we do? We put more gunpowder in the cannon, of course, and do it again. So, we put so much powder in there that it comes out a lot faster. So, the cannonball comes out of the cannon, 
and it goes crashes over here now the curvature of the earth is such now that the cannonball is is now landing out of our sight and by the way this happened in world war ii battleships had cannons that were so you know the, the cannon the shell came out so fast that it uh it would go uh you know two or three dozen miles and it would be over the curvature of the earth they couldn't see what they were shooting at because of the curvature of the earth so they had little spotter planes that would say a little to the left okay um then because anything worth doing is worth overdoing we put more powder in our cannon and we shoot it again no more march of the penguins <laughs> Okay, now, then, since I wiped out an endangered species, I'm going to deserve my next fate. You put so much, you put so much uh, powder in the cannon that the ball, the cannonball comes out so fast. Now, why is this doing it? Because gravity is pulling on the orbit, right? It's pulling on the orbit. It just shot myself in the head. All right? But if I duck, if I duck, the, the, the cannonball will continue to circle the earth forever. Now, you can't do this near the earth's surface because the atmosphere slows the object down enough for gravity to pull it down and hit the surface. But if I was to do this on the tallest mountain on the moon, where there's no atmosphere, I could literally shoot a, 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 a shell or a cannonball off, off this mountain, and it will skim the surface of the moon and, and stay in orbit around the moon for a long, long time. What? I, I would love to do this. <laughs> Except it's kind of like... Um, playing with lawn darts, you know, or, or, or shooting an arrow straight up in the air, and then you, you lose track of it, that's when you dive under a car, all right? So, yeah, I, w I probably wouldn't do it because it's going so fast you won't be able to see it. But it would work. Now, what is this speed? There is a very special speed that if you, if you launch your, your space shuttle or whatever, out of the atmosphere and then it pitches over because what it's trying to do is go fast enough so that when it cuts its engine it doesn't fall back into the atmosphere but it just keeps going or uh, uh, falling around the earth and where the curve of my path matches the cur surface of the earth well it's easy this is so easy to derive because what kind of force is this it's a centripetal force so all we have to do is take the force of gravity, which we know is g m m over r squared, and set that equal to m v squared over r. And the mass of my little spaceship cancels out. This is the mass of the Earth, or whatever planet I'm in orbit around. The This is the radius of the orbit. Okay, so this will cancel this. And so we'll get v is equal to the square root of g m over r and with this simple little equation tells me how fast i need to go to be in orbit around any object in space the sun use the mass of the sun the moon use the mass of the moon whatever you want and notice that you know the greater your radius the slower you go so the farther away you are from the planet the slower your velocity needs to be to stay in orbit. Yes? So if we randomly figured out, if we figured out some way to increase the velocity of the Earth, would our orbit just become bigger? How do we increase the velocity of the Earth? Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm not... Jetpacks. Seth, I'm not going <laughs> Seth, why, why don't you go sing somewhere, Seth? Okay, now... Now, what if I wanted to, though, what if I wanted to go so fast that I go up and I never come back down. Well, let me show you an analogy of this that works really well. Suppose, 
Seth has asked one too many questions that annoy me. <laughs> and there is a, a well, a deep, a deep well. And as a class, we grab Seth and we throw him down to the bottom of this well. So here's Seth at the bottom of this well. Now, Seth wants to escape. So what he, but he can't crawl up the sides or anything. So what he, what he does is he, 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 he writes a little note to his mom or something and says, please help me, I'm in the bottom of this well. And he takes this rock and he tries to throw it to the top of this well. So what he does is he throws it with some initial velocity, right? But he doesn't throw it fast enough, and so it goes up and comes back down and maybe hits him on the head or something. Okay, no. Uh, now, he could increase the speed. Now, if you go faster than you need to, you still escape, right? If he throws the rock faster than he needs to, the rock will go up and then go above the well and come back down. But we all know Seth. Seth wants to get the job done doing as, as little work as possible, right? So what he's going to do is he's going to throw it at the perfect speed to just escape from the well, okay? Well, we can figure that out because the only force doing work on the rock once it's left Seth's hand is the force of gravity. Therefore, mechanical energy is conserved. So in other words, the energy at the bottom of the well of the rock after it's left his hand is equal to the energy it has up here. Well, let's make gravitational potential energy is going to be zero here. Uh, let's give this uh, well a value of h, but it's going to be negative h. And so how much energy does it start with here? Well, it's got... Um, this is the initial energy the rock has. It's got one half mv squared, right? The rock has some kinetic energy because he threw it up. And then it also has some potential energy. Um, plus, it, well, let's make it minus. Why is it minus? Because it's below. So minus mgh, OK? Now, so this is how much mechanical energy it has uh, with kinetic and potential energy. But that's got to equal the energy he's got up here. Now, just as the rock reaches the lip of the well and lands on the well, how much potential energy does it have? Zero. How much kinetic energy does it have? Zero. In other words, the energy when the rock escapes from this well, the mechanical energy it has is actually zero. Now, what if he threw it faster than he needed to? Well, that means that when it reaches the lip here, he's got kinetic energy. His potential energy is zero, but the rock is still moving, so it's got kinetic energy, so it just has some extra energy. But if he throws it at the slowest possible speed at the bottom of the well, the rock will stop um, and just perch itself on the lip of this uh, well up here. So in other words, E initial equals E final, but E final is zero. Now what this lets me do is solve for the escape velocity. So the mass of the rock cancels out. Uh, I bring negative GH to the other side, becomes positive GH. I multiply by 2 and I take the square root and I get V is equal to the square root of 2 GH. Now this is the escape velocity from the well. Okay. And that's the minimum speed that Seth needs to throw the rock for it to leave the well. Okay, well, we have a very similar problem here, though. Uh, when we want to throw a rock or a missile or a spacecraft, and we want it to escape from the Earth's gravity well. This is a gravity well. You're in a gravity field here. But here we, we consider the gravity field to be a constant. Negative 9.8 newtons per kilogram. But if we're, I want you to think of gravity like this. Think of Earth. Here's Earth. 
and it's at the bottom of a gravity well. But this gravity well, instead of having straight sides, it slopes like this until you get approximately out to infinity. Now think of this as think of this as a potential energy function. Doesn't this kind of look like a square root? Okay, well, what did we say potential energy was? Okay, well, let's say we're on the surface of the Earth. And let's, let's neglect the atmosphere and all that, okay? So we're going to shoot a rock. We're going to throw a, a, a cannonball straight up. And it's going to go so fast that it won't come back down. But uh we don't want it to go any faster than that we don't want it to go faster than it has to so the escape velocity is a minimum possible velocity so I, i'm going to throw this thing up and so now it's got uh energy it's got mechanical energy once it leaves our cannon and then it's gonna now what is gravity going to do to my rocket as it goes farther and farther away it's going to slow it down right gravity is going to slow it down and as it gets farther and farther away, it's going to go slower and slower. But what happens to gravity as you get farther away? It gets weaker, right? So the rate at which I slow down slows down. And so I go slower and slower and slower and slower. Now, finally, after I'm billions and billions of miles away from the Earth, maybe I'm only moving a millimeter per second. But... I'm still moving away from the earth and I'm still slowing down. The thing is, is that it's a perfect match between uh, the rate at which I'm slowing down and my speed slowing down that when I get, when I reach infinity, I stop. <laughs> but I never reach infinity, so I never quite stop. But you can pretend that, you can say this, that the energy is equal to zero as R, well, I should put it up here, as R goes to infinity, the mechanical energy of my system goes to zero. I'm sorry. All right, here we go. So as, as the, my distance away from the Earth, from the center of the Earth, actually, as the distance away from the center of the Earth goes to infinity, my mechanical energy goes to zero. So when I'm way out here, you know, my you could say, well, it's not quite zero, but it's close enough. It's point zero 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 one, okay, joules. Well, that but the only force doing work on my whole ride out to infinity is the force of gravity. So therefore, the energy here equals the energy here. Well, what was my energy here? Well, I had kinetic energy. And I had potential energy, but what is potential energy? Negative GMM over R. Now, if you are at escape velocity, here's the big idea. If you're at escape velocity, you have zero mechanical energy. The whole way, you have zero mechanical energy. Now, you have kinetic energy but that's positive but you also have gravitational potential energy and that's negative and when you add a positive and a negative together if they're the same they cancel they, i mean they they, they they it's zero well now i can solve for my escape velocity the mass of my sp spacecraft doesn't matter but the mass of the earth does matter or whatever I'm escaping from. And so I just take this and I say, well, uh, 1 half V squared equals GM over R. So I multiply both sides by 2 and I take the square root and I get my escape velocity equation. It's equal to the square root of 2 GM over R. This is my escape velocity. What's that? Oh, yes. So, this is a very, and it's a sweet little equation. It's so amazingly cool. 
that you can figure out how fast you need to go to go up and never come down from any any object by the way if you're standing on an asteroid a fairly you know good sized asteroid but the mass of the asteroid is so small that my escape velocity might be two meters per second or even slower so if you're an astronaut standing on the surface of an asteroid don't jump because you'll go up and you'll never come down <laughs> you can literally launch yourself into space off an asteroid now beware don't go to a black hole here's the coolest thing of all this is why this is my favorite thing You've, you've all heard of an, uh, an event horizon for a black hole. Have you heard of this thing? Okay. The event horizon is the place uh, surrounding the singularity of a black hole where once you pass through this, this boundary, light can't escape because the, the gravity is so strong that the escape velocity exceeds the speed of light. Now, watch this. Let's let the escape velocity be the speed of light, which we use the letter C to represent. So we'll say the escape velocity is equal to the square root of 2gm. This is the mass of my black hole. It's big over r. So I'm going to square both sides. C squared equals 2gm over r. Now I'm going to solve for r. r is equal to 2gm over c squared. This is called the, I think it's the Schwarzschild, I can't say it, Schwarzschild, um, Schwarzschild radius. It's the radius of a black hole, really. If you get closer to the singularity of a black, here's what's going on in a black hole we think. We don't really know what goes on inside a black hole. But you have a point in space where there's infinite density. It takes no volume and it has lots and lots of mass. But it creates, basically it's an infinite gravitational field. But then you get away from it, the gravity field is getting weaker. But you have this radius around the black hole where light can't escape. So if you're floating in space, like you're an astronaut and you're floating here, you can see light coming in from the universe, but any light, let's say you have a flashlight and you're trying to send a signal to an observer out here, the light just goes whoop. <laughs> it, it can't escape. It can't get out. They can't see you. You can't send a signal. You can't send any kind of signal from inside this radius to the outside world. And uh, this is called the, the event horizon. Now, I will tell you, this is a simplification based on Newtonian gravity. It actually works. But this is not the actual proof that you, you would use with general relativity. General relativity is really hard and you would take it as a graduate student at a, um, as, as a physics major. But they come up with the same answer. Even if you use relativity, you get the same answer. So that's pretty cool. Um, and uh, so avoid these things. By the way, you could figure out what the Schwarzschild radius is for the Earth. Put the mass of the Earth in here. Uh, I, I, it turns out to be a couple of centimeters. <laughs> if you concentrate all the mass of the Earth into a point in space, you would create a black hole, but the black hole would be this big. <laughs> or the, 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 you know, you, you wouldn't want to go in there. Uh, now, that black hole would not be stable and it wouldn't last, but uh, anyway, so we got two equations here to use. We've got this orbital velocity equation. This is how fast you need to go to be in orbit. This is how fast you need to be to, to escape. Now, do you see uh, they're very similar? Yeah, they're very similar. 
The escape velocity is just the square root of 2 times the orbital velocity. Now, isn't that cool? Why? Why the square root of 2? I don't know. It's just the way our universe is. Um, and uh, so uh, enjoy that. You know, smell the flowers. This is cool stuff. And then do your homework, Daniel. <laughs>